So pretty much the first thing I have to change in any student's technique is how they stand and approach the golf ball. As simple as it sounds to do that correct, nearly every lesson, any level of golfer, I have to improve their setup, their posture, their alignments, how their joints sit. So let's make sure we get this right and it will, will have a knock on effect to the rest of your golf swing and help you play better golf and reduce those scores. So in golf, we always have what I would class as the first point of breakdown and then the second point and the third point and then the effects. So nearly always in 30 years doing this, the first point of breakdown is nearly always how people stand to the golf ball. So I wanna to talk to you about some of the common faults I see daily with players that I continually to teach and then the routine and processes you should be going through weekly, monthly, as a habit in the house, on the range, on the course, to make sure you set correctly to allow the rest of your swing to freely move more correctly to give you better outcome. So commonly, there's a couple of things I see. One is the upper spine tends to bend forward too much and the chin tends to go down too much. That's the first probably no-no. Now what that causes is really causes you not to be able to rotate correctly. We get a lot of rotation from kind of our neck area of our golf swing. So when our chin sits forward, our chin and head, the weight will want to realign itself as we start the swing, either by falling forward or standing up. So getting the head in the right location and getting the upper spine more, let's say, more neutral, there is some curve there, is key. I'm gonna show you how to do this in a minute. The second thing would be the lower spine. So some people, the lower spine will have too much, what we call anterior tilt, which means that the back here will become too hollow. Little hollow is absolutely fine. Some people will have too much posterior. This is far less common. Mostly it's this and kind of very fixed. And also within this, the posture, the pelvis will tend to sit too far this way, the right hip being higher than the left. So it's crucial that we get the left hip higher than the right. And it's crucial we try and get this pelvis in a neutral position to allow you to rotate your mid spine, your rib cage, without getting any pain or having to compensate with other freaky movements with your knees, your feet, your head going all around the place. So in order to make that kind of beautiful central kind of pivot or a fraction of movement off the golf ball, a good posture allows us to do that. When we look at the feet, nearly all golfers will stand with the feet too straight. Width of the stance, again, sometimes it will be a bit varied. If we're hitting the mid iron, we want the width of your stance to be shoulder width apart. Easy way to tell that is point your finger straight down from a normal position. Try and get those fingers in the middle of your feet and then make sure your feet are flared. The left one needs to be flared probably double the amount the right one's flared, but both need to be flared a little bit. If we were hitting the driver, make these fingers go into the insides of your feet and the same kind of position within your feet in terms of flared. If we were hitting the short iron, these fingers can be on the outside part of your feet. And then if we were in the wedges, we want to make sure this with the stance really gets close to two club head widths apart as is max. If you have the feet more flared, look at it from the ankle point of view rather than the toe point of view. That is what we're looking for in terms of width. So those are the common things we see. As I said, the most important things within that, they affect rotation and stability. We need both those things. Apart from that, we're gonna talk a little bit about alignment at the end. So how do we get in that routine, that correct position every time? This is the best way, and I'll also share with you a simpler way. But if we take the club, put it across our groin, roughly about halfway along our pockets, stick our thumbs into our sides, here, then go and take a rough distance away from the golf ball. And I'll show you how to get that distance away from the golf ball correct in a second as well. Stand tall, neck tucked in. So you want to feel like your neck goes to your collar on your jumper or your t-shirt. And then from that position, bend over where your thumbs are towards the golf ball without letting your bum go back too much. When you feel you're in a position that you're going to about to topple over or fall into the swimming pool, flex those knees and squat a little bit to recenter that balance and the balance should feel in the middle of your feet. The last thing I want you to do from here is feel that this left hand 
goes towards target and goes up a touch without your knees moving and that gives us the right pelvis position. So from there take your set up to the golf ball and we should have balance points that go from the back of the armpit, tip of the knee and ball of foot. That line should be able to be there, that's the balance points we want to see. Your pelvis should feel a little bit more towards target and your sternum should feel a little bit more away from target. So the sternum and head sit kind of in the middle of the stance. Depending on what club you are depends what, how that is relevant to the ball and your feet will be shoulder width apart as we already said. Pressure wise, 50-50 for an iron shot for me, 55% for a driver and probably 60% for a, a wedge or a short iron. Putting, I'd go 60% as well. Bunker, 60%. You get the idea. Hands are going to be slightly forward, opposite the inside left thigh. If you have a ball position that moves around like I would have, then it will vary per club. So we want it always there, and if the ball moves forward or back, that relationship obviously changes. So that would be the setup position we'd be in. Keep the neck tucked up to the chin, and we want to feel from there, then we can make our normal swing. Get comfortable. And move from there. So what I'd recommend is you do that routine. Initially, every ball for four or five balls, if you're not used to it, and then maybe every 10th or 20th ball for the first week or two when you're practicing, not on the course. And then when you're looking at, uh, when you're looking at long term, probably every four or five practice sessions just do it for a few shots. Let's check, check you out on the distance from the ball and we'll cover alignment very quickly. So distance from the ball, when I'm in the right position, this should be about a fist and a thumb away from my thigh, my lead thigh to the grip. If I put the club head down on the floor, I'd want my heels to be just inside the butt end of the club with the top edge of the club on the ball. So there's a slight bit of daylight, probably up to about half an inch. Where you feel comfortable and you're in balance for your body shape and limb length, make a note of where your toes are. So my toes here are pretty much are on the R on the project, on the shaft. So I can make sure I'm always in that spot with this club, this seven iron. But again, if I'm on the golf course and I want a simpler version, bend and bow, push the hips, fist and the thumb, ball in the center, that's the position I'd want to start in. And swing from. So I could do that every single shot, do a mini bend and bow, and that would help me make sure I'm setting the right kind of angles with the right kind of tilt. In terms of alignment, it's key. If you're aiming right and trying to look at target, you're gonna have a swing that compensates for that, a hand action that compensates for that. So what we're looking to do, if I wanted to go for that little bushy area on the edge of the fairway there, just short right of the fairway, point the club at that spot, draw it back, pick then a spot within three to five inches in front of that golf ball here. Focus only on that spot, get your lean edge at 90 degrees to that spot, take a rough stance, mini bend and bow, use your head, make sure you're not looking over your shoulder and you can see the target, I'm comfortable I'm aiming pretty good there, then from there make your swing. Now if you hit a shot offline and your alignment's great, that's more to do with the swing mechanics. But if you're confident and trusting in your setup and your alignment, there's a long, you're a long way there to hitting great shots consistently and repeatedly and lowering your scores. That alignment routine would go all the way down to short game. Make sure you trust it, pick a spot, and hit it with confidence and conviction every single time.